between the Soyuz TMA-20 spacecraft and the Rossviet module, the module uh, and docking port that is attached to the Earth-facing side of the Zarya module of the International Space Station, to which they linked up to just over two hours ago at 11.11 p.m. Moscow time, 2.11 p.m. Central time, completing uh, the trek uh, from the launch pad of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan to a flawless on-time docking to Rosviet that occurred over the southwest corner of the Republic of Mali in western Africa at an altitude of 224 steps. Miles. About uh, 15 minutes after the docking occurred, the uh, docking probe on the forward end of the Soyuz spacecraft had retracted, uh, and the hooks and latches uh, closed uh, between uh, Soyuz and the Rossviet module docking system to form a hard mate between the two vehicles. Shortly after that, Kondratiev, Coleman, and Nespoli made their way from the descent module, the centermost portion of the Soyuz spacecraft where they are strapped in for launch and landing operations, to the orbital module or the habitation module, the uppermost portion of the three-compartment Soyuz vehicle, doffed their Sokol launch and entry suits, climbed into more comfortable flight suits, and began the process of conducting leak checks and pressurization checks at the docking interface uh, between Soyuz and Rosvia. That will set the stage a short time from now for the opening of the hatches. We are expecting downlink television through U.S. television systems uh, in about uh, 30 minutes or so of the hatch opening and welcoming ceremony that will join uh, Kadratiev, Coleman, and Nespoli with the existing uh, Residents of the International Space Station, Station Commander Scott Kelly, along with his Russian cosmonaut crewmates Alexander Kaleri and Alex Gripochka. Uh, there you see inside uh, the International Space Station, uh, you see Scott Kelly as uh, he uh, completes preparations from the station side of the leak checks, along with Kaleri and Skripochka, who are back in the Russian segment of the International Space Station as they prepare for the opening of the hatches and uh, the restoration of the station to a six-person crew. Kelly, along with Kaleri and Skripochka, are in their 70th day in space, their 68th day aboard the International Space Station since they were launched in their own Soyuz spacecraft, the uh, TM-01M spacecraft from the Baikonur uh, Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan back on October 8th, docking to the Poisk module, which is the space-facing side of the Zvezda service module back on October 10th. You're looking right now at the Soyuz TMA-20 spacecraft as it is docked to the Rossviet module. And again, as we said a moment ago, final preparations are underway uh, for the completion of the leak checks, the verification from environmental systems officers, both in Houston at uh, the uh, International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, as well as here at the Russian Mission Control Center, that all is in readiness for the opening of the hatches, uh, the pressure equalized on either side of the docking interface that will lead to the greetings between the two crews, a welcoming ceremony, congratulatory calls from Russia. Russian, American, and European space officials who are uh, here in Korolev for this event tonight, as well as uh, greetings from families of the crew members. That all coming up soon in about 30 minutes. Almost two and a half hours ago on final approach to the International Space Station with Dmitry Kondratiev, the Soyuz commander at the controls, flanked on his left by the board engineer, Paolo Nespoli, and on his right, Katie Coleman, the Soyuz TMA-20 made its final approach and a fly-around of the International Space Station to precisely align the spacecraft with the uh, Rosviet module. This is a uh, high-resolution, uh, high-definition uh, video that was captured by Scott Kelly of the uh, final uh, minutes of the fly-around that enabled the Soyuz to align itself and its forward docking probe about 180 meters uh, directly behind the Rossviet module so that Russian flight controllers uh, could capture uh, and to make a final evaluation of uh, the systems on the Soyuz spacecraft before giving the final approval for the uh, final approach and docking. And Houston on space ground two for the window shutter constraints. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, understand. We'll be uh, go to open those windows on at the uh, or after the no earlier than time. Checking.
open the windows at 2300, Scott. And this is Stan, Orbit 3 teams with you now. Thank you, Stan. That's good. That's your good news in the middle. Notice that, but the uh, lab window is still uh, 0030. Zero, zero, zero. <laughs> Measurement number? One second. One second. Six. Space. Measurement number six, 736. Wake up, it's 736. And in five minutes, we will take the last measurement. Zero, zero, three, zero. Okay, thanks, Sam. Promising. Для Александра. ISS Moscow on Space Ground 1 for Alexander. Yes, Alexei, go ahead. I'm going to hand it over to Vladimir and um, he will talk to you about the um, checkout of the signal path. Okay, sure, go ahead. Sasha. Hi, once again. So, Sasha, uh, go ahead and activate cameras in uh, the service module and uh, the MRM. And then um, you need to look at the monitors and the SSC. Um, you will need to send a command. Okay, no problem. I'm going to uh, go to the MRM, activate everything that needs to be activated, and then I'll come back and uh, continue talking to you. Copy. Это по 
After 30 minutes, the pressure is still 736. Uh, the pressure drop was zero, and I'm closing Kakate at the same. We copy all, and you're going to close Kakate. I'll go to follow. Mission Control Moscow, and then now we'll go to page 94, perform uh, step 15, decimal 2. And as you can hear, the Russian flight control team here in Karolyov continues uh, to check off uh, the various uh, procedures with uh, board engineer Paolo Nespoli as uh, the crew on the Soyuz TMA-20 uh, continues to run through the variety of leak checks uh, to make sure that we have an airtight seal at the docking interface between uh, the Soyuz spacecraft and the passageway to the Rosviet module. Similar procedures taking place by Alexander Kaleri and Alex Gripochka on the um, station side of the docking interface. You're looking at the TMA-20 that was launched uh, in the early morning hours just after 1 a.m. Baikonur time on Thursday morning. That was Wednesday afternoon U.S. time and uh, docked uh, flawlessly uh, about two and a half hours ago at 11.11 .11 p.m. Moscow time, 2.11 p.m. Central time, 224 statute miles over Western Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, guys, are you seeing anything? Hello. Yes, we're seeing MRM-1, uh, but if you don't mind, Sasha, can you delete the date from the camera or take it off the screen? Oh, date, yes. And, uh, uh, Sasha, can you uh, throw the switch on the um, service module uh, switchboard? That's okay. Okay, I'll put that in work now. Okay, so this is that, and uh, let me... Uh, flip another switch. Station Houston on two for Scott. Paul is trying to move to his seat. That's okay. Hmm? Well, there you go. Okay, we are not seeing... Uh, never mind, we are seeing it. And Sasha, could you uh, adjust the view so that... Uh, and now uh, the view from uh, inside uh, the... Camera. Zvezda service module. Uh, uh, you see Alexander Kaleri uh, as uh, the work is uh, continuing in the Russian segment of the International Space Station. You see uh, above uh, the hatchway uh, the pictures of uh, Yuri Gagarin on the right and Konstantin, Konstantin Folkowski, the father of uh, space flight, on the left as uh, the Russians uh, continue to pay homage. Uh, to those great space pioneers, we are just four months away from the 50th anniversary of the launching of Yuri Gagarin on April 12, 1961, in the Vostok 1 spacecraft from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan that inaugurated the era of human spaceflight, uh, enabling humanity to leave its planet. Uh, Alexander Kaleri, the veteran cosmonaut, uh, is presiding uh, over the preparations uh, in the Russian segment for the crew to uh, enter the Zarya module of the International Space Station uh, so that they can be greeted uh, by the uh, trio that has been on board the International Space Station uh, since, since October 10th, following its launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in its own Soyuz spacecraft. Scott Kelly, the station commander, along with Kaleri at the bottom of your screen, and Alex Grifochka will uh, remain on board the station until they depart on March 16th, uh, two weeks in advance of the launching of another trio of station crew members, NASA's Ron Garin, Alexander Samokutiaev, and Andrei Borisenko, who will join uh, Kondratiev, Nespoli, and Coleman at the time of undocking of uh, Scott Kelly and his crewmates 
Kondratiev uh, yes, will have been uh, already handed over the command of the International Space Station, and, uh, and uh, enough lighting? Expedition 26 will then transition uh, to Expedition 27 at the moment of undocking, according to the flight rules. It was uh, good, and then uh, it got a little dim. Okay, and the date came back up. Okay. We are going to check that, uh, but we're going to uh, zoom in um, because um, the lights are pretty bright on the back, so we're going to make sure that the view is good. But, uh, Sasha, if um, you're able to add some lighting, then that would be great. Okay, uh, let us see what we can do. Understood. We looked at different screens, and uh, we think that um, whatever lighting you have in the MRM would be sufficient. But you would like us to add some additional lighting if it's possible, correct? Yes, because on some cr screens... It's hardly visible, but um, Sasha, go ahead and switch it to the SM uh, camera, and then we'll just leave it as is for now. Okay, and how do you read me from the MRM? Loud and clear, Sasha. Good job. But, um, we this is a rare glimpse inside the Rossviet module that was delivered uh, to the International Space Station by Atlantis's astronauts on the STS-132 mission this past May. Alexander Kaleri, the veteran cosmonaut and Expedition 26 flight engineer, is uh, setting up the lighting and communications inside Rossviet. You can look at the, uh, the docking hatch that will be opened a short time from now, and right behind that hatch is the, the docking interface uh, to the upper hatch of the orbital module of the Soyuz TMA-20. Uh, the leak checks uh, have been conducted on both sides of the docking interface, and uh, we're standing by a short time from now for the opening of the hatches that will enable uh, the two crews, the two three-person crews, uh, to greet one another. Uh, for the inauguration and the resumption of six-person crew operations as Expedition 26 doubles in size. All right, 15 decimal two. Select desk gas display. We're done. Pressure? Moscow, the pressure in the orbital module is? Uh, you can ask uh, the station crew, and they can tell you. Copy. Closing RPV-1. Closing RPV-1. Opening KKT. RPV-1 is already closed. Opening PEV. And uh, looking at S3 uh, display to monitor. ISS uh, Moscow, KVD BOSU. Once again, uh, you're looking inside the Rossviet module, better known as Mini Research Module 1 or MRM-1. 
uh, delivered uh, to the International Space Station and attached by Atlantis's astronauts last May on the STS-132 mission uh, to the uh, Earth-facing port of the Zarya module uh, to act as a laboratory and uh, as a docking port and eventually as uh, a port uh, in which spacewalks uh, can be conducted in the future. And you're looking right now uh, in the middle of your screen at the Soyuz uh, TMA-20 attached uh, to the Rosvia docking occurring at uh, 2.11 p.m. Central Time. Just uh, to the right, attached uh, to the piers docking compartment is the ISS Progress 39 spacecraft that will be uh, departing in the next several weeks to make way for another Progress vehicle that will be launched uh, to the International Space Station. Now back inside the Zvezda service module, Alexander Kaleri uh, at the rear of Zvezda. That open hatch leads to the ISS Progress 40 spacecraft uh, that docked uh, to the station uh, back in October. Four Russian spacecraft currently affixed uh, to the International Space Station, two Progress resupply vehicles and two Soyuz vehicles, one each for each of the trio of crew members comprising Expedition 26. We're closing in uh, on the formal opening of the hatches and the welcoming ceremony between the two crews. Leak checks just about complete. The environmental systems officers on uh, both sides of the Atlantic Ocean uh, are double-checking uh, the air tightness of the docking interface between Soyuz TMA-20 and the Rosviet module before giving the go-ahead for the opening of the hatches uh, between Soyuz and the Rosviet module. Yes, that's correct. We'll let you know when we're ready to proceed. Okay. Can you camera down? А тут поряги ручка вставлена. Готова открывать люк. Москва поряги. We have uh, attached the hatch opening aid and ready to proceed with hatch opening. Copy поряги. We're watching. And you can see from this view in the camera in the U.S. Destiny Laboratory of the International Space Station as Scott Kelly and other uh, crew members uh, begin uh, to make their way uh, through uh, the uh, Unity Node 1 into the uh, Zarya module uh, to which uh, the Rosviet module docking port is attached to uh, get ready uh, for the opening of the hatches. Hatch handles are being applied on uh, the Russian uh, segment side of the International Space Station. You can see on the far right of your screen, uh, just adjacent uh, to the Rosviet module, that's the uh, cupola that was delivered uh, to the International Space Station on the STS-130 uh, uh, mission. The uh, multi-windowed cupola offering uh, the unique view of the world and there's Alexander Kaleri, one of the world's most experienced space travelers. In fact, uh, when this mission is completed, uh, Kaleri uh, will have moved into the top three of all-time space travelers in terms of cumulative time on orbit. So, Moscow, where are you? Moscow, where are you? The cover, hatch cover is open. Copy. Okay, go ahead and uh, close the PEV and monitor S4 message. The docking interface um, still smells... Um, of the paint that was uh, applied on the vehicle at the um, manufacturing plant. Where Moscow? Where are you going to go Moscow? Where are you Moscow? Uh, 
Отсюда Москвы Варяги закрываем. Москвы Варяги, closing. Да, закрываем КВД. Yeah, go ahead and close uh, the PEV, please. Это work. КВД закрыт. PEV is closed. S4, yes. And we see S4 eliminated. Готовы к команду S5. Ready to send uh, Sierra 5 uh, command to open КВД S2. Выберем команду S5. Uh, yes, go ahead and uh, send. Call of the young. Command command here five. 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 Command here Eight ten. Copy. Seven eight zero. Copy. Seven seventy. Seven eight zero. Final preparations are continuing on the Russian side of the um, International Space Station as uh, the newly arrived uh, trio of Expedition 26 crew members, Dmitry Kondratyev, Katie Coleman, and Paolo Nespoli, prepare to open the hatch uh, to the Soyuz TMA-20. Likewise, for Alexander Kaleri, Alec Skripochka, and Station Commander Scott Kelly that you see with his back to the camera in the Node 1 or the Unity module of the International Space Station, the uh, two crews are preparing to greet one another as soon as the hatches are open and then to move into the Russian uh, side on the Zvezda service module to receive congratulatory calls from dignitaries and family members gathered here at the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov. Station Moscow for Sasha. Go ahead. Sasha, without a video, open the hatch now, without a video, and then you will get ready for official TV coverage, so that not to have any glitches. There should tell us, please. Which hatch are you? Do you see? I can see Pegao from FGB. Okay. Normal. Okay, we are opening the hatch. Yes, please open it, then you will close it. The not latch and will start the TV coverage. Very uh, good. Moscow issue command F6. F6? Yeah. Affirmative. Yes. Executed. Governor Sue 
LED went off. It's off. The hatch opened from the station side. On the station side. Copy. All right. So waiting for Okay, everything is ready. Do you want me to activate the camera night? Yes, yes. I said I'll come. As you could hear from that call uh, translated uh, from Russian flight controllers here in Koryov, uh, the hatch has been opened on the Zarya side uh, of the uh, hatch interface uh, to the Rosviet module, still awaiting the hatch opening from the Soyuz side. So moments from now, the two, all of the hatches will be open and we'll be waiting uh, for television to be acquired about three and a half minutes from now on the other side of our tracking and data relay satellite system handover period in order uh, to see the actual welcoming uh, between the crews. Now we'll switch over the camera and we'll be ready. There's that one. Expedition 26 flight engineer Oleg Skripochka in his 68th day aboard the International Space Station. Hatches in the process of being opened on both sides of the docking interface. Now you're looking at a view inside the Rosviet module. Okay, we can see that is the docking port to which the Soyuz TMA-20 linked up to uh, almost three hours ago. Alexander Kaleri preparing to open that hatch, and on the other side of that hatch will be the trio of counterparts uh, and the newest residents of the station, Dmitry Kondratia, Paolo Nespoli, and Katie Coleman. Go ahead. You want us to Yes. Please come in. Hatch is opened officially at 5.02 p.m. Central Time. Dmitry Kondratiev arrives on the International Space Station in the Rosviet module. Katie Coleman next, greedy, greeted by Alexander Kaleri. And Paolo Nespoli receiving greetings from Alexander Kaleri, the International Space Station, back to a six-person crew. All uh, of the crew members now on board. The official hatch opening time, 5.02 p.m. Central Time, 2.02 a.m. Moscow Time on Saturday. Expedition 26 doubling in size. We're in the process... Uh, of locking up on the other side of our tracking and data relay satellite system. The crew members will make their way back into the Zvezda service module uh, where they'll don headsets and receive congratulatory calls from Russian, a space agency, NASA, and European space agency officials and their families. Hatch opening occurring uh, as the International Space Station passed over the coast of Peru, just south of Lima, at an altitude of 224 statute miles. SSMCC Moscow on a G1. Do you have a go to translate to SM? We're watching you.
And back on board the International Space Station, Oleg Skripochka leading the way as uh, the other crew members uh, slowly but surely will make their way back to the Zvezda service module. Dmitry Kondratiev, who will become Expedition 27 commander in uh, mid-March, taking over from Scott Kelly, making his way into his uh, new home on the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Katie Coleman, beaming from ear to ear with the usual Katie Coleman smile that has become her trademark as he moves, she moves into her new home, and Paolo Nespoli from the European Space Agency revisiting the International Space Station after having been involved in the installation of the Harmony Node 2 on the STS-120 mission three years ago. And the vehicle that brought them from the launch pad at the Baikonur Cosmodrome not quite uh, two days ago, the Soyuz TMA-20. All the crew members now uh, putting headsets on in the Zvezda service module for the welcoming ceremony and congratulatory calls. Paula, how do you read us? Loud and clear, thank you. We can see you. You are here, we can see Katie, and in here in the balcony. And MCC Moscow, there are representatives of the European Space Agency, NASA, and what is most important, your families are here. Copy, ready to talk to you. Congratulations on the successful docking. We can see you feel well. Happy to see the crew that was on board the station, Sasha, Oleg, Skripochka, and Scott. Congratulations, all of you, you are now a united team and now representatives of NASA and European Space Agency will be talking to you. Thank you very much for the congratulations. Paolo, hello, it's Paolo. here. Uh, you're looking great. Uh, you're looking great. Frank, how's it going? It's nice to be here again. Yes, uh, we, we looked to, to the start uh, and you were uh, looking greater as well while walking out to the Soyuz. We saw you with uh, Sasha. Uh, I have to tell you that uh, she's back in Houston. Everything is great with her, with the kids. Uh, they are very happy. And also uh, the family at a very good uh, event in, in Verona. So everybody is uh, very happy to see you on board with the start of the Isa Magistra mission. And uh, we are all sure that you will do a great job there. Thank you, Frank. Thank you for everybody taking care of everything. We are ready here for, for being of help up here and uh, carry out all the tasks. Okay, say hello to uh, all your crewmates as well from uh, ESA. We were uh, very proud uh, looking to the launch, and uh, we are looking forward uh, to the, the six of you uh, doing uh, a great job there on board. Uh, of course, not only for us, but uh, for the entire partnership. Uh, you make the partnership proud. Thank you, 
Thank you, Frank. Uh, and say hello to everybody at ISA there. Looking forward to work up here. Katie, Dimitri, Paolo, this is Kirk Sherman from NASA. I want to uh, congratulate you on a super launch and docking. Uh, you guys look great. It's great to see you on board that big space station. Hey, Kirk, it's nice to talk to you. It is so beautiful in the Soyuz. We had the best time, and uh, now we're at the station. It's just amazing. Okay, you guys have fun. We'll be sending lots of vehicles your way here very shortly. Sounds good, Dad. All right, we have some other people here that would like very much to speak with you. Hi, Mom, it's Jamie. Uh, uh, it's easy. One oh, bubble wrap. Yeah. Papa, please eat. Привет, Влад. Пап, хай. Хай. I love you very much. I'm happy to see you. And I love you. How are you going? Very good. That was a good docking. Very good of you. Are you with mom? Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm about to be talking to you now. So long. Dima, hi. We're happy to see you. Hi. Thank you. Unfortunately, I can't see you, but it's nice to hear you. Congratulations on the successful like it's launch and successful docking. Thank you. The friends, relatives, well, they were very much concerned, and they say hi and congratulate you on the successful docking. Thank you very much. We we'll love you. I'll call you down soon. And we're proud of you. Missing you. Okay, thank you. I'll call you down. And wish you successful mission. Thank you. Okay, talk to you later. So long. Hi, Mom, it's Jamie. Uh, well, Dad's going to have to do twice the job of a dad because, uh, well, you're gone for six months, so, yeah. And, uh, well, well, I miss you a lot, and I'll take care, Dad. I'll take care, Dad. I know you will. I miss you, too. I wish you could have been up in the Soyuz with us. It was really pretty amazing to look down and see the Earth. And now we're in the space station. I almost got lost on my way, uh, on my way to this place from the Soyuz. It's so big here. And hi, Katie. I know you'll take care of Dad. Hi there. Hi, Katie. I miss you guys. Hi, Katie. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, do that. Yeah, do that. Hi, Katie. It's Josh. Hi, Katie. <laughs> so glad that you're on the space station. For the last three years, we have been trying to figure out where you are, whether it's in Germany or Moscow or Star City or Japan or Canada or Texas. And now we know exactly where you are. We know exactly, we can find out at any moment precisely where you are, and you're only, I don't know, 200, 200 miles away. So you seem close to us now. Our hearts are with you. I love you guys, and we won't have to even figure out time zones. It'll be the same time zone for six months. Katie, you get one more. This is Josiah. Uh, you look great up there, and uh, I miss you already, but you seem a lot closer. Lots of love, Earth. 
Uh, lots of love Come, coming from here, too. I miss you guys. And it, I was thinking of you traveling from uh, Baikonur back to Moscow and thinking that we had the easy road just being up in space. I'm glad all of you came in to say hi to Chris. Go ahead. I just wanted to say hello to all the other folks that came uh, to, to the launch. I really appreciate that they came and hope everybody had a great time. In the control center, Gennady Rokunov wanted to say a few words. Dear colleagues, I hope we are colleagues, though we are on the um, Earth and you are in space. We want to wish you health, we wish to work and capacity to work so that the mission would not be just an ordinary one, but new scientific research to be carried out that would result in very good, that would provide good results so that cosmonautics would make another, not just another step forward, but to attain new principal results, new knowledge of humanity, and that it would be a new step for the humanity to move further into the deep peace. We would, I would like to wish you every success. Good luck to you in your endeavors and experiments you are going to conduct. Thank you very much. Every success to you and waiting for you on Earth. Thank you, Gennady Gennadyevich. Well, I think new people have arrived on board the station and will be more successful, though the three of us, we did our best to perform the scientific experiments on board the International Space Station. All right, guys. Enjoy your flight. Enjoy your Envy you. Congratulations on the successful docking, and I wish you every success. Good luck to you, and talk to you later. All the best. Thank you. Thank you for those wishes, for the kind words. Thank you for the greetings and kind words. Thank you for the support. ISSMCC Moscow, thank you very much for the report, for the, the for your time. So we'll proceed working for the Form 24, the new arrivals. I would like to congratulate you on the successful arrival. Every success to you and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Loshim. Okay, then we'll proceed working. Now please deactivate the TV camera and proceed for the timeline. There it was, uh, the welcoming ceremony and congratulatory calls uh, from uh, dignitaries and family members uh, from the balcony here at the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov. Uh, the first uh, congratulatory call came from European Space Agency astronaut Frank DeWinna, the first European Space Agency commander of the International Space Station last year, congratulating ESA astronaut Paolo Nespoli of Italy, who uh, begins his five-month tour of duty as an Expedition 26 and 27 crew member. International Space Station Deputy Program Manager Kirk Shireman congratulated Katie Coleman and the rest of the crew on a successful docking and arrival on the International Space Station. And then family members began one by one uh, to talk to the crew. Uh, Katie Coleman's husband, uh, Josh Simpson, along with uh, her sons, uh, Jamie and Josiah, offered uh, 
their best wishes uh, as uh, Katie Coleman begins her tour of duty on the International Space Station and the head of the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center, veteran cosmonaut and the most experienced space traveler in history, Sergei Krikalov, offering uh, his congratulations to the crew as they begin uh, their five months plus aboard the orbital outpost. Once again, uh, the docking occurred right on time at 2.11 p.m. Central Time, 11.11 p.m. Uh, Moscow Time, uh, over the southwest corner of the Republic of Mali in Western Africa. After a series of uh, leak checks on both sides of the docking interface, hatches were opened uh, at 5.02 p.m. Central Time, 2.02 a.m. Moscow Time on Saturday, as the International Space Station passed just to the south of Lima, Peru, at an altitude of 224 statute miles. Upcoming uh, for the crew uh, will be a safety briefing that will be conducted by Station Commander Scott Kelly. That's coming up within the hour, followed by the deactivation of Soyuz systems, the Soyuz uh, TMA-20 that carried uh, Dmitry Kondratiev, Katie Coleman, and Paolo Nespoli from Baikonur, uh, and the launch pad at the Cosmodrome in the Central Asian Steppe uh, to the International Space Station. Now on ISS power for the remainder of its uh, stay, uh, docked to the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Zarya module of the International Space Station. Uh, there will be some transfer of uh, some of the cargo, smaller cargo items carried uh, to the station on the Soyuz vehicle. Uh, they will be stowed, and the crew will begin an extended sleep period at midnight Central Time, uh, early uh, Saturday morning Moscow time. Sunday is an off-duty day and an orientation day for the crew as they begin. The newest uh, arrivals on the International Space Station will begin their familiarization with station systems and how to get around the mammoth complex. And Monday, they're back into a normal complement of scientific experiments, orientation, and preparations for what uh, shapes up to be one of the busiest four-month periods in the history of the International Space Station with the arrival of a progress vehicle in January, uh, an arrival of the Japanese uh, H-2 transfer vehicle loaded with cargo from the launch pad in Tanegashima, Japan, and then in February, the shuttle discovery, all things uh, being equal, uh, with a launch date of no earlier than February 3rd on the ULF-5 mission uh, to deliver uh, supplies and the permanent uh, multipurpose module that will become a permanent fixture on the International Space Station. That will be followed in uh, due course in mid-February with the launching of the Johannes Kepler uh, automated transfer vehicle uh, from the uh, Ariane Spas launch site in Kourou, French Guiana, bringing more supplies up to the International Space Station. This view from the Destiny Laboratory on the orbital complex as Scott Kelly gathers uh, his uh, newest crew members in the Unity module of the International Space Station, the connecting point, if you will, between the U.S. and Russian segments of the complex for the safety briefing we talked about just a moment ago. Again, a smooth docking, an uneventful and flawless docking by Dmitry Kondratiev, Katie Coleman, and Paolo Nespoli. Hatches open, the six crew members together, as they will be for the next several months until Kelly, Kaleri, and Skripochka return to Earth in mid-March. They'll soon be followed thereafter by the launching of another trio of uh, space travelers, Ron Garin, Alexander Samarkutiaev, and Andrei Borisenko on March 30th for an April 1st docking to the International Space Station. Is with all the Moscow Varag. One from Beo. A reminder. Uh, it's necessary now to install quick release screw clamps. The clamps on the docking interface. And what about MBS? Do I have? That will wrap up our coverage of uh, tonight's docking of uh, the Soyuz TMA-20, the hatch opening and welcoming between the crews as they begin a weekend of orientation and familiarization of the International Space Station. And on Monday, a resumption of a full complement of activities leading into Christmas week on board the International Space Station for the half-dozen crew members in the multinational presence on board the orbital outpost. That's it for tonight. Thank you for tuning in to NASA Television. This is Mission Control Koryov.